that has closed down all bars, all music venues and theaters all around the world. Um, well Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. Uh, happy to see you again and uh, I hope everybody is doing fine. Uh, since you know we are all locked in at this moment, uh, this week I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, epidemic. And since pandemic is uh, a very new thing because the world had never been globalized so much, so uh, I want to show you, you know, the Chinese writing of epidemic okay I'm going to start my um, I'm going to start my PowerPoint now okay here it is let me make it bigger sorry everything is new so I just to learn Okay, here I am. So I will start from the beginning of the slide. Okay, uh, again, this is the basket starfish. You know, I believe that uh, because we are too uh, brainwashed, you know, to only see things from a very Eurocentric point of view. So uh, my presentation is really want to see uh, how we can look at the same thing from another point of view, okay? So uh, I don't believe that uh, we be, we are from separate tree families because believing in that can only usher in human hierarchy. I believe that everyone starts from this same core at the same time back in history and then every one of us, every culture is just a branch of the same core okay no one is newer no one is under uh, anyone's hierarchy okay so i think you know the way of looking at the family tree you know it needs to be changed you know you can talk about your own family tree but there's a whole world the cultures all come from one same core okay so um again you know i want to give you a very vivid visual image is what I'm trying to get to you uh, about the very intricate relationship between all languages. Okay, about epidemic. And uh, more than 3,500 years ago, we already had writings like that. As you can see very clearly, it's just uh, turn 90 degrees uh, straight, you know, vertical. And basically, you can see a person having troubles lying down on a bed. And as time went by some 2,000 years ago, and Chinese had already developed uh, 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 this uh, writing here, it actually become uh, what we call a determinative. The determinative, you know, whenever you we see this determinative, we know that it's something connected with sickness, pain, or whatever. Okay, so uh, this word right here, you know, with the same determinative, and you can actually see it very clearly. This is not only a phoneme, you know, give it the sound. It also gives you a very uh, a vivid visual idea of a seat, a bench, okay? So this is uh, the uh, uh, what we, we call sickness, okay? When you are stationed, we can, you cannot move around, you have to, to sit on the bench, you have to stay on the bed without moving, okay? So it is actually quite a grave sickness already. And then when it comes to this, you know, gradually we have not word and this is the word that we use now for the epidemic something that people pass along okay so i will show you how come this empty bed right here forming the corner right there have this part and i can take you back you know from 2000 years ago to to more than 3500 years ago the word developed like this backward it is originated from, uh, you know, a hen holding some kind of a maze, you know, the hen or the staff authority. So other than sleeping in bed, you know, an epidemic really needs the uh, intervention of an authority. That's exactly what's happening in the human world at any time of our history, okay? So... So who is this intervening power? Of course, you know, uh, when I look at the hand, the hand is actually a very big topic by itself, you know? So you, I can just follow the sound, you know, this is one of the sound. I wouldn't say that this is the only sound because uh, how to say the hand has actually branched out in many different ways. But now you have to 
uh, pronounce the sound as E. Well, the sound E, if you look at the Eurocentric lens, you, you always write it like this or write it an I. But actually, it ended up that I found out that, you know, if it become very confusing because, you know, in the Western way, because you depend so much on the alphabet, become an E, become an I, become a Y. But you have to know it. Uh, very strongly and mentally that it is the E sound, okay? So, and this is the ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, the E, and then this is the ancient Phoenician, ancient Hebrew, this is a hand. Actually, they have the uh, sound, uh, sometimes you can hear them say Yad, Yod, Yud, so the vowel in between keep changing. You just have to uh, bear in mind that there's an E sound at the beginning, okay? And the Chinese, interesting, we have the same writing right there. And uh, if you look up the dictionary, you cannot find this sound normally. And because, you know, it stays in a colloquial way, and then it becomes this, oh, sorry, become this word right there. And then uh, in the colloquial Cantonese, as we are very ancient uh, dialect, we say Yao, Yao, as you can see, here the first part of that is also e okay the yao is actually means a hand in a very casual way and then the word itself somehow uh developed into the idea hidden idea of the either the right hand side or, or either it means the some kind of blessing or some kind of support or some kind of assistance if you look up the hebrew dictionary the yad means exactly the same thing as the chinese dictionary and and i don't think this is accident accident okay so if you look at the Chinese dictionary more you will see that the hand holding a staff right there also carry the sound of yi the yi in this case is actually stand for some kind of an official okay and then another writing right there and and passing through one of the meaning as a father we actually has the pronunciation of ye ye actually means the forefather or your um uh an, an elder or actually the Lord or actually God himself. So this one has a lot of variety of meaning right there. Yeah. Okay, let's look back in the Hebrew world. Okay, so uh, of course, everybody knows this picture by uh, Michelangelo. You would just hand right there is the hand out, you know, hand reaching out. And this is the Adam. Actually, this is a very interesting picture, but I am not going to go into it now. It's actually a very revolutionary picture itself. But you can see that to, in order to show the help of God, we always only show the hand. Because from very ancient time on, whenever you express God, it's always just a hand. Okay? And you can see that in a lot of uh, mosaic, you know, in olden time or the stained glass in churches. In the olden days, you know, you were always only see God as a hand, nothing more than that. And even when you say the writing on the wall, all you see is just the hand. You don't see God. You know, you're not supposed to know God's face. You're not supposed to know God's name. So what was God's name? Look at that. This is God's name uh, from the very beginning. And then, of course, you know, uh, at the beginning, this is the, 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 the hand right there. And But then you try and scribe it. It becomes the Hebrew writing like this. And it already become the yah, the Y alphabet, okay? And then, of course, the, the ya in Hebrew, and which takes the uh, the first two alphabet right there, is actually the short, short form of calling their god ya. It's exactly the same like ye in, in, in Chinese, okay? Okay, and then if you go, if you tr keep transcribing it, you will see the confusion of it. If you are Greek, and then you will, because it become the iota, the I, okay? So it will be like this. And of course, you know, later on, the Roman took power, and then everyone now, you know, reading English is actually inheriting Latin right now. So it becomes writing like this. And if you ask uh, a Jew, you, they will they will tell you that you cannot read it at all because God's no name is not supposed to be known, you know. So so uh, they do not read it. Whenever they see this writing right there in their Bible, they will just write read it as Adonai, you know, because this is not supposed to be read. But of course, you know, in the English world, you try to read it as Jehovah, Jehovah, whatever you 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 like to transcribe this I or Y or the E sound or gradually change to the J sound. Sound. So this is a big confusion right there. 
but I want to show you this because I want you to see the difference that we make for ourselves and the similarity that's, un that's underlying everything, okay? And then, of course, you know, this hand, you know, which stands for power and also stand for, for punishment, also stand for control. It's also, you know, very clearly... You know, shown by church members. You will see this is a very common shepherd's, you know, staff right there. This is very important because in real use, it's very uh, important to have this hook right there when you try to hook and, and separate the end emotion. But you have to notice something very, very important because when the Pope or the Bishop or, or, or the Cardinal holds this kind of uh, power symbol, uh, they always hold it on the left hand because it's just a symbol. They are not using it. It is just to, to, to for a visual sign for you to look at them, to know that they have a certain authority. Exactly like this one here. You look at this, this is the left hand and this is the right hand. That's the difference, okay? So let's also uh, look at the English word, you know, even though you don't think they are linked, but this is very important because the yardstick, you know, is uh, used to be that a shepherd or whatever professional you, you you used to have, you know, carry. And then after that, you know, it has also become a measuring stick. Of course, a measuring stick is also, you know, how you uh, how you measure things, you know, it becomes three feet is exactly the, the length of your own arm, okay, the thing that's straightened out. Okay, this yard is also a ruler. A ruler is also what you measure, also is also who rules you, okay? So so all these things that the ancient were actually paying a lot, playing a lot of word game, okay? So, but you have to make sure that the left hand holds that is an official, maybe not blood related to you, but this ya or ye is actually holding the right hand because this person actually has the power to beat you up. An official, you know, unrelated to you, they cannot beat you up. They can hold the power to show you that they have power, but they don't use it to beat you up. But who can beat you up is the, is the is God. Okay, Scott is someone close as your family, your father. But if you look at this, I can show you one picture and, and in a minute, okay? So, and I also want to refer this word to you. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then actually, this is a, 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 a word like this, ja. Ja is actually the Jamaican where the, back, the black people call the God, okay? So you can see all this thing is actually just a mutation of the I and Y and J, okay? So interestingly, the this is exactly what is the uh, black people. I want to show you the picture because I want you to constantly keep in, in your mind. There are people of different color who share exactly the same sentiment like you, who share exactly the political development like you, who has the same right. But because of you looking at the world through a Eurocentric view, you always brush them aside. But they are actually closer to the origin than all those symbols, you know. When the Pope and the Bishop is holding the power the, with the official of the left hand, these people, because they are really doing the job, they are still holding this uh, uh, staff, you know, on their right hand because for them, they need to do the job, you know. Okay, so... Other than that, I will also see you how in the Chinese we also mutate in the same way. Because if you see this is Yao, the hand, we also have this pronunciation of Zhao. Zhao is also means the claw, the hand. So we just uh, flip this uh, in a different position. It become a writing like this. In, in the Chinese, we can actually distinguish them easily. But uh, as a whole, because Chinese depends very much on visual, so we are trained very, very sensitive on the visual dis uh, transcribe of things, you know. But if you look at uh, alphabet to, uh, for too long, you are losing uh, all the visual uh, information that was behind it. So that's why I try to uh, present to you this different point of view, okay? Now I will carry on to the next. Back to my epidemic. And this is the word for epidemic in Chinese. This is sickness. But I can actually give you a word in English, the bang, because in Chinese, we actually pronounce it as bang, the same way bang, bang, okay? But of course, you know, uh, because of the Eurocentric understanding of everything on earth, and if you look up the bang, they will, they will uh, 
point you to a Germanic uh, origin. Even though they cannot provide you with the, with, with the proof, they will just tell you a Germanic origin and you will trust it totally because you trust in authority blindly, okay? So, okay, let's go on. You know, this is the Chinese word and now you have to pay a little bit attention to this very interesting angle that it forms, you know, with the empty bed. And the bed is empty, there are two reasons. One is because, you know, the person but if bed is empty, the other reason is that the person died, okay? So uh, what is this death to do with this angle right there? I will show you that the Chinese actually links very much, you know, to the hieroglyphic expre expression of themselves, okay? So this is the Chinese word of uh, death, mong. We say mong. It's very much like you say mort or, or anything to do with death, okay? It's a person hidden behind a corner, okay? So is hidden and then as um, and this is exactly another word in Chinese that we have another uh, pronunciation nick right, nick right there okay is a person hidden right there and because when a person died you cannot see him anymore and psychologically it's very much like the test they did on children in ancient times if you don't see a person it's either hidden away or he ran away he left the place or he's dead okay so it's as soon as the people are out of sight and then out of mind, okay? This is always we are still talking about. So it's, it's forgotten. So look at the Chinese word forgot, don't forget. And it is actually based on this uh, uh, angle, uh, hiding a person right there with the adding of a head, sometime later understood as the, the heart, you know? And whether your head forget or your, your heart forget is someone already hidden, okay? So look at, let's look at the hieroglyph. The hieroglyph has a writing right there. It's a person hidden behind a, some kind of angle right there. And then this, this one actually has the same pronunciation as a mummy, totally dead, okay? So you will see that it's very interesting. The reading itself is actually comes down to the English man. And I'll show you in the next slide how it came through the Greek to become the memory, okay? So you will see that hidden and death is exactly the same thing, okay? And um, we see that the, in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, there are lot, uh, different writings, it's just a, with this angle. I want to show you this because. The angle, uh, the corner is very, very important. This is this shows a human development of architecture. As soon as we begin to develop the building technique of ramming, uh, ramping the earth, and then we can build very city with strong corner, then war be and a lot of civilization also begin. But this is another topic, okay? But I want to show you how interesting that uh, ancient culture have all these angles right there, a very similar idea, okay? And then, but you talk about pronunciation. This is Hmong and Hmong. It's very similar to the English uh, mod or mock, okay? There's something to do with that. And the other one, the sound nick or neck, like this. And both, you know, it's showing that, you know, it's hidden or an empty bed, okay? So it has to do with necro. Uh, of course, you know, the necro is also to do with, you know, death, you know? It, I will show you in the next. Like, right. So the memory is a lot to do with remembrance. So remembrance is out of sight and forgotten and dead. Okay. So um, this is the hieroglyph and this is its pronunciation. I mean, so uh, this is, uh, you know, as you can see that you can only guess that someone is hiding, hidden, you know, and then this is a mummy definitely is hidden, you know, the body is hidden inside. This is actually a coffin, you know, not the dead body, okay? So the body is actually hidden inside, so it's to do with hidden and also death, okay? So the Greek is actually have this minimi. A minimi is actually to do with remembrance, memory, and coffin. You will see that the whole thing is a very, very clear continuation and then you look at the Chinese right there this is Hmong and then from it it branch out in two way this is Hmong which means dead high or to escape you know someone ran away you cannot see them anymore and then the other one is Hmong and then means and to forget you know and then this one is Nick that is someone hidden and then this Nick or neck is uh, coming from the sick person, you know, we don't know where this person has gone, whether he has run away, run away or, or cure or 
is actually there and gone, okay? So, but anyway, look at again, they closed means cops and dead. Look at all this. You can actually understand the pictures rather than writing, okay? So, but if you compare all this sound, we shared a very, very similar sound. But because Chinese is very old, because Chinese is very uh, monosyllable, uh, so so um, it is, um, sorry, I touched the wrong button, sorry. So I I continue with this, okay? So you have already known the Greek, you know, mini me is also remembrance and memory. And the crow is this to do with uh, the cops and death. Sorry, my mouse is very, very sensitive. Whenever I touch it, it, it goes off. Okay, so we... Well, go on to see Latin because everyone believes that everything only comes from Greek or Latin, okay? So the mortem of course to do with die or dead and then the memoir is also to do with memory or your memo, okay? You write down a memo so you don't forget, okay? And interestingly this nebula, I want you to understand actually I can break words. Normally actually words can be broken into very small parts, okay? Nebula, why is it means mist or fog? Because it means that something is concealed from sight, you cannot see it. Of course, neko in Latin, directly to do with death. And then you see the R is not that uh, sure, you know, because in Latin there is no R right there. Okay, so, and, and also this word nigger, people get a little bit uh, nervous about that, but I want to face it very directly because nigger actually means the black which associated with death. But before it gets to the color of black, it actually means dark. It means no light. That simply means that you cannot see. So uh, when they first used the, the, uh, the word nigger, it was you know, it didn't mean harm. It was only later that we human beings use it, you know, to attack people that it becomes such a, a very, very intrusive word. Okay. So this is uh, I I want to show you how this comes to this mean and me and uh, all means to uh, for, uh, dead or, or hidden, okay? And this is also Chinese, the dead, and then Chinese hidden, and then the Chinese hidden the Chinese uh, sick bed, okay? So you can see that. But there is one very important thing in, in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, is this god right there. Look at that. It has the same pronunciation and using in a different way, exactly like the Chinese keep flipping our different tones to mean different thing, okay? So it mean actually uh, was transformed, uh, I mean transcribed into this Amun, Amen, Amon in your English world, okay? So who is this one but the hidden one or the name of a man Amon 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 actually means the hidden one and look at that he is also holding that scepter of power and authority okay and this is the god of death right there okay so I want to show you if you speak English this is a very uh, uh, word that will touch your own culture so as I said this word you know from the very beginning become the Chinese determinative of the bed of the sick bed empty Bed, which forms that angle right there, and then uh, from that we have the the, the uh, in Chinese you will pronounce this as bang or bang. Okay, so uh, you will see that the bench everybody is sit tight, nobody is moving, or that person is actually so sick that he cannot move. You can understand it both way. But I will show you some English word bang. Bang, uh, bang is actually very uh, directly something that caused death simple you know and then ban the word as a curse and a, for ancient time when you receive a curse is definitely when you get sick a ban is also in, in a way means a prohibition an exclusion when you ban someone from entering something or leaving and of course when you have an epidemic you have to exercise this ban so this this ban is happening when there is a pain okay so this bench is very important. So also the word banal. Banal means common to all, means compulsory. That means everybody has to do the same thing to stop something or the, or to call to arms. Everybody is fighting a common enemy. So don't, uh, don't always think that the fighting in the wartime. 
now as you are what you are doing now is also fighting a war with the disease okay with the virus okay also the banish banish also means for forbid or to get rid of when you get the virus of course you want to get rid of it you want to forbid it and but the word worst use of a banish is to send someone away from a country or place and and punishment of course sometimes it's used as punishment but i'm sure that in the old days you also use it uncivilizedly you know to ban people from going to their places when they have some kind of sickness but this is also human nature but as you look at uh, uh, I mean, this slide right here, you will see how close our uh, relationship is. And okay, since time is short, I also, um, I will also stop it right there. And let's see. Okay, um, I hope you will see me now right there. And I, I'm not sure if I am doing the right thing, but if you can see me still, and I want to show you certain things because, you know, I want to show you the appearance of the word Lord. You know, this is the first appearance in the Bible. And, and uh, what is in um, the verses, you know, two, Genesis 2.4. This is the first appearance of that. And where it appears is exactly after it described, you know, the, the, the creation of heaven and earth. So the hen is very, very important because at that time they were showing that creator hen the forming of the earth and the, and the, and, and heaven. So of that and then and also I want to show you that this is another Hebrew explanation okay so it says that something the word um, you know uh, about the hand sometimes the word is used in conjunction with an object that can be grasped by the hand that means the staff right there okay so you will see that the Hebrew Bible uh, the Hebrew explanation is exactly the Chinese explanation it, are these all coincident I don't know I ask you but in the time of the epidemic please keep yourself safe and please stop uh, thinking things, you know, in a very uncivilized way, and this whole thing, we are, we are doing it all together.